Y'all two ugly motherfuckers must not be from around here. So I'ma only say this once. Y'all get the fuck out my hood. See, we got a simple nigga. Hey, look, we don't take orders, nigga. We give them. You heard this box fade wearing motherfucker, man. <laughs> Sound like somebody else disagrees. Yo, yo! What the fuck is going on, man? You must not know who you fucking with. And I don't give a fuck. All right, everybody calm they happy asses down. My man, let me holler at you real quick. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy Jason Jabbar, uh, actor, artist, uh, entrepreneur, overall creative, and I would just describe myself as a forward thinker. You know, everything I do, everything I touch, uh, I want it to be about progression and, you know, expression and just taking creativity to the highest platform you, you know, possibly can. Yeah, uh, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, all my family still live in Brooklyn. Uh, outside of like my little mother's tribe, uh, my mother, my, my some of my close aunts, uh, yeah, they, they moved down here. So I, I've been living out in Atlanta for a pretty long time. Um, so I would say I'm like the, the best of both worlds. You know, I got the family and the, the upbringing and the, the grassroots in New York, but then I got the the, the swag and the, and the knowledge of Atlanta too. So I think that's something that rounds me out pretty well. A lot of people when I, when I, when I speak, they don't really know exactly where I'm from. And I try to keep it like that. Like, I don't want anybody to ever really be able to guess everything about me off the first look. Um, but, you know, I've been through a lot of my life and I, from a young age, I had a lot of goals and ambitions and dreams for myself. And growing into my adult self, I've definitely been able to, you know, see those come to fruition, some of them. And, you know, I, I can see a lot of them are more attainable than they used to look when I was younger. Um, so me just, you know, kind of flourishing into a young adult it's all about kind of knocking those things off my bucket list and, you know, taking care of my family and stuff like that. So you've been in Atlanta long enough to already be familiar with the whole BMF story. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I knew about the story for a long time. Like one of my one of my brother's friends, he's uh, his pops was actually in BMF for real, for real. Uh, so it was very close, you know, a close story to uh, my household. Um, and, you know, anybody in Atlanta who really really, really know the history and the culture, knows how impactful BMF was. Like, dudes wasn't in the club making it rain before BMF. Dudes wasn't standing on sections in the club before BMF. Like, it was a lot of things that BMF, bottle service, all that, like, that's all BMF. They came and changed the whole culture of the club scene. Um, so, yeah, I was already familiar with it. And before even working on a project, I knew how long they were trying to get this project off the ground. You know, it was years, years in the making, like, at least five to seven years they were trying to get this TV show off the ground. Um, so, you know, I, I, in no realm that I ever think the universe would connect with me actually being on the show. Uh, but that just goes to show you how crazy the universe is, you know? Never underestimate the power of the universe. That's what I was just about to ask you. I'm like, man, how is it watching them growing up? Yeah. And then you right there, yep. reenacting the same stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a blessing. I mean, like, I've always been somebody who was thirsty for insider knowledge and thirsty to, you know, just to learn things and getting to be on set around some of these dudes, you know, they, they're really good people, you know, and um, just getting the honor to tell some of their stories, you know, it means a lot to a lot of people. It's dudes in the chain gang, you feel me, that's watching this and this is historical. They like, they, they telling my story and they feel represented and all that. So, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to be in a position where I can use my craft and help tell somebody's story for the world to see on a world type of scale, like BMF really global now. You know what I'm saying? For multiple cultures to see. Right. So how long you been acting? Um, I started acting, I've been acting for about half my life now. Like I started really getting seriously into acting when I was like 12, 13. Um, that's when I started doing my first little TV gigs. Um, did a lot of extra work, a lot of background work. You know, I put a lot of hours in, did a lot of training. Um, but yeah, from a young age, I used to watch um, a lot of like uh, shows on VH1. They used to talk about like the, the the fanciest houses and and the people with the with the biggest just nicest cribs and all their occupations seemed like it was acting. You know what I'm saying? So from a young age, I was like, yo, I want to be an actor. You know what I'm saying? Because they seem like they some of the most successful people, and I always knew that I had that kind of like the character for it. And I've always been somebody who likes to go against the status quo and um, do things that other people are not doing. So when I was 12, 13, I didn't know nobody who was an actor. So I wanted to be the first person like around to be like, you know, I'm an actor. And that's what kind of gravitated me towards that and got me so interested in it. And I'm just, you know, I'm glad I started when I did. So who has impacted you the most as far as acting, like helping you 
you know, get your craft all the way together. Yeah, I, I would say, um, I would say my mother probably because she was kind of like the backbone early on for me, you know, get into acting classes and really making me taking taking it serious. Um, of course, I, I was taking it serious off the bat, but she just, you know, kind of was there to support me every step of the way. When I did my first TV show, you know, she was there on set with me. When I was did my first play, she was, you know, and fully involved with getting me there every day. And it was a proud moment for her every time she see me on stage. And just having that kind of support system, the older I get, the more I realize how crucial, how really crucial a support system is because that can be the difference between you realizing your greatness and you not realizing your greatness. Like you can ha you can be great and it can be there, but if you don't have somebody watering your seed, it might not blossom all the way for you to get to where you need to go. And I definitely had that type of mother who had that maternal instinct where she knew that her son was special. So she made sure to water my seed like throughout my whole life. So what kind of advice could you give to like aspiring actors? Cause you didn't just wake up and just become an actor. Yeah. You know, you really put in that time and that grind. Yeah. Um, I definitely would say um, chase the knowledge. Like uh, don't specifically chase the results, but chase getting better. You know, always seek to become the best version of yourself, whether that's getting the best acting classes, practice, practice, practice. Even if you don't have an audition, do find a side to read, memorize it, tape it, study it, take notes on yourself, just keep doing it. Like you have to fall in love with the process as much as you fall in love with the results. Um, that's one thing that kind of shifted me into overdrive as far as like when I started seeing like real success. I stopped getting so attached to what I was getting and what I wasn't getting and stopped getting attached to money that I was making or wasn't making. And I started just falling in love with the process because that's where all the beauty lies. And a lot of the books that I read uh, from very successful people, they talk about like, you really have to respect your journey because that's the best part of life. The, the path to getting to where you want to go, one, it never ends because you're always going to be on it. But two, instead of, oh, you know, I, I'm not this yet or I'm not that. You got to say like, yo, I'm on my way to becoming great. Simplify it. Like a lot of life is the way you look at it. Um, you could think about a glass half empty or glass half full, but at least it's water in the glass. Like it's people who don't even have water in their glass. You got water in your glass. So keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what else have you worked on besides BML? Um, I've been to uh, Black Lightning, uh, Atlanta. Um, Meet the Browns. I did uh, Coke commercials, AT and T commercials, uh, Champagne Ill uh, with Sony Television, um, Star Girl. That's on uh, CW. Um, yeah, man, I, I done I done a couple shows. Like you know, I remember when my resume was was thin, and slowly but surely, like just now, my resume is getting you know more and more expanded. So you know, I'm just just happy, bro. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm I'm grateful and I'm always excited to 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 keep working. You know. So you were talking about books earlier. Mm -hmm. um, give us a rundown on what type of books you read. Um, I ain't gonna lie, right now I'm on some super autobiographical, autobiographical type of wave right now. Um, I just finished reading Will's book. It's called literally called Will. That's a great book. Everybody should read it. Spiner actors definitely. Um, I just got finished reading a Fifty Cent's book, uh, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. That's a great book. Um, and I'm a huge Mob Deep fan. Um, so I just read Prodigy's book, mm -hmm. uh, The Infamous. That is a crazy book. Like the stuff that Prodigy is talking about is absolutely next level. Um, so because I just finished, I actually just finished that Prodigy book today. Um, so, you know, I, I'm still hungry for reading. So I ordered two more books today. I ordered uh, DMX's autobiography and I ordered one of 50 Cent's earlier books. It's called From Pieces to Wait. Um, I think it came out in 06. Um, but like I'm a super nerd when it comes to learning people's stories and how I can use things that they've experienced and apply it to my life. Because I feel like a lot of the shortcuts in life come through learning through other people's experiences. Like if another person made a mistake, you don't necessarily have to learn, make that mistake because you can learn from it. You know what I'm saying? That's how you can, that's how the some of the most successful people are able to shortcut their process because they know that knowledge is in books. You know, if you want to hide information from somebody, where's the one place you should put it? A book, because people don't read. You know what I'm saying? So if you're chasing that knowledge, open up a book and you definitely find something you're looking for. So uh, being on set, does 50 Cent come to set? Like, do you work with him often? Yeah, I mean, you know, 50 there here and there, you know, but, you know, he's also running a lot of different shows. So uh, 50, you know, pops in when he can. And, of course, he shows love and makes sure everything's okay. But, you know, he he's very good at making sure there's a great staff on hand to kind of, like, over, you know, ex be, become, become an extension of him. You know, the best leaders know how to keep people around them that can represent them in a good way when they're not around. Um, so 50 don't have to come around to know that the job is getting done. 
but you know he's very involved in all of his shows all of his projects you know and he's a very humble stand-up dude like he's one of the nicest guys you ever meet don't get the persona and what he look like and the aunt is confused like he one of the most humble dudes you ever meet and he a cancer too we both cancer so we always click on that um yeah what have you learned from him just by uh watching him and working with him um just always study the environment um one thing i really like about 50 is that he don't smoke a drink um and i think that contrary to people what people might believe because they see him in a club all the time they see him lit you know he a rapper but 50 even since he was younger like a young rapper he never was into smoking and drinking because he loved being alert and focused he was always about discipline like he'll go do a show next morning wake up early hit the gym you know like those type of things really make me respect him because i know how hard it is to ignore a lot of vices like when you're successful when you're young and you Everybody want to be around you. Everything is being pushed and pulled your way. But to have the discipline and be like, nah, y'all can add it. I'm cool on that. The discipline is the probably the number one thing I'll take from him. And the humility. Like, 50's mad humble. Like I said, like, he's a cool dude. So, speaking of vices, I know I know the women after you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they see you on TV. I know that women after you. Are you being disciplined? Yeah, for sure. Like, I think uh, you got to be very cautious when it comes to, like, who what people want out of you and in your life. Um, especially in the area that we live in, where things are, are so much more superficial and things are so much more social media driven and everything's about a look or whatever. And being somebody who's full of substance, you just got to be more particular about who you associate yourself with. Um, and you got to be very choosy, and very picky. And I'm very protective of the energy that I keep around me. So, you know, I know how to I know how to read people. So, you know, that, that's not really a huge problem for me. No, nah, that's good because yeah. at this point, you know, your <laughs> reputation, everything, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, for real. So tell us about the music. You know, yeah. I didn't heard a couple of songs, you know, like, man, I, I just heard a song, Story Time. Yeah. You <laughs> dropped like four months ago. Yeah. Like, tell us about the music. Anything coming up? Yeah, yeah, man. I got a, I, I've been, I've been really locked in on the music side. Uh, and I got a lot, a lot, a lot of great things coming. Um. Just know it's a lot coming because I've been pretty quiet. So just know a lot of work has been getting done. Probably the, the most work I've ever done in the shortest period of time I've ever done it in. Um, like I just locked in the past couple of months and I've been really just focused on my discipline and recording at a higher clip. Um, like just disciplining myself to even when I don't feel like making music, make it. And it's been helping me get in the spirit of creating some of the most, you know, fluid music I think I've ever made. Like it's kind of just coming second, second nature to me. And I've uh, been, you know, doing music for a minute. You know, I started taking it seriously around like 2018. That's when I was like, you know what, I I I, I could really do this. And um, it's been a journey. You know what I'm saying? I, I I've had a lot of fun with it, and I've seen a lot of growth. And I think people who have, you know, no matter when you, you know, kind of became hip to me, you definitely have seen the growth, like very fast growth. You know what I'm saying? In a short period of time. And I just want to keep growing. I mean, um, where I'm at in life, at my age, I think that like. I'm not even at my prime yet, but I think that like I'm I'm showing prime tendencies. I'm showing like glimpses of like, yo, you know, I'm entering a scary stage in my life where it's like people are getting on notice and, you know, are gravitating towards it because it's like a, you know, it's like a ball of hot energy. You know, people are like, what's going on over there? You know what I'm saying? So, you know. So is it one that you like better, like acting or music? Um, it's different creative itches. You know, one is scratching his shoulder and one is scratching his shoulder. Um, I definitely think uh, music is more, it's more of like, I can create it from scratch. I haven't reached that side of acting yet where I'm necessarily creating, funding, and shooting my own projects yet. Of course it's gonna come, but music is something that I can wake up and, and kind of just do. You know, acting for me right now is, you know, contingent upon the roles that I'm playing, what, what I'm booking, me auditioning. So right now, until I get in the right position, it's gonna be me like portraying somebody else's character or somebody else's, you know, idea for a character and I'm bringing it to life. Um, but music is kind of like, I can just create it from thin air. Um, so it's just two different creative, you know, itches, but they both, you know, they going, it's like yin and yang. They both are a big part of me. So who inspires you music was? Um, I'm a huge, 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 like I said, I'm a huge Mob Deep fan. Um, I love Mob Deep. I love uh, Nas. Nas always been one of my favorite rappers, Hov. Um, I think for the for the newer generation, I think Wayne Wayne one of my favorite rappers to ever touch the mic. I think Wayne probably the best rapper in history as far as like just the skill of rapping. I think Wayne Wayne got it. Um, and of course like the Coles and the Drakes like they've been carrying the torch for the past ten years. So 
their touch on the game can't be, you know, denied. Um, you know, and I like even a lot of new people like J.I.D., uh, Deontay Hitchcock, great rapper, uh, Kenny Mason, a lot of underground rappers, but like, you know, the new school has also got a lot of like, you know, great rappers and great potential. Um, so I try to like keep my ear to everything and just, you know, I've never been one of those people who think, oh, this generation is better than this or this, you know, because everything is subjective. It's all about what you grew up with and what you experienced and who you grew up listening to. Um, but I think where people go wrong with music is that they just get trapped in their era and they think that no era that comes after them will be better. Um, and that creates resentment and it creates tension amongst the generations. So, you know, I'm always open to listening to anybody, you know what I'm saying? So I heard your dad is half a meal. Mm -hmm. You know, tell us about your dad. Uh, my pops is one of the most like influential, dopest MCs out of Brooklyn um, by the name of Half a Mill uh, from the Albany Projects. Um, all the OGs already, already know my pops, so when they meet me, it's like, damn, I, I know your pops. Like your like I spitting images of each other, and then they hear me rap, and they just like, wow, like you know that's that's hereditary. Like it really was passed down. Like for me to not have you know so many experiences with my pops as a as a as a teenager and even as a young kid, like for me to not have those experiences, but for me to possess that trait of being able to rhyme like he did, like that's nothing but genetics. Um, so he, he was a Brooklyn legend and you know, everything I do is like a, a living spitting image of him. And it's all about just taking the torch and you know, taking it further than where he took it. That's what's up, I'm sure you're proud of him. So um, is there anything that you want right now that you don't have? Um, nah, man, I mean, I think, the only thing I want to chase is just more knowledge and to keep getting smarter and keep getting the best version of myself. Um, I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm good. I'm, and my health is good. My family is OK. And right now, you know, I'm blessed to be, you know, just getting things done and creating the greatest music I think I've ever created in my life. And, you know, I'm just healthy and blessed to be alive. I, I don't really need nothing else. I just want to keep getting smarter, keep learning and just keep becoming the best version of myself. That's really all I can ask for. So in the next five years, where do you see yourself? Um, I see me moving to the other side of the film world, uh, maybe getting behind the camera, directing something, producing projects, you know, helping discover new acting talent. Um, same thing on the music side, you know, getting, you know, maybe starting a label, you know, doing a compilation album, you know, finding talent and help putting them in position to do good things. And I always said that, like, you know, once I feel successful in those respective fields that I wanted to, uh, teach a class, like maybe be a professor one day and teach like a music theory course or, you know, a creative theory course. I'm sure like years from now, there'll be like new subjects and stuff. So, you know, I've always just kind of wanted to teach and lead. Um, so I'm sure that that's something I'll tap into at some point in my life. Okay. So what's your ideal role? Um, <laughs> I want to be Static Shock. Before I slide that and down, I want to be Static Shock. I want to be a superhero. Okay. Represent the black kids and let them know like, you know, we represent it, you know what I'm saying? So that's a, definitely that's one of the goals that I want to check off my list. So basically you want to, uh, you want to get down with Marvel. Yeah, I want to, hey, look, whoever I got to get down with, <laughs> I mean, put me down. I'm trying to be a black superhero. You heard me, Warner Brothers, Static Shock, you heard me. What's up? <laughs>